for joining me tonight. My special guest, I'm joined by Professor Robert Jervis, the Adlai Stevenson Professor of International Affairs from Columbia University. I'm also joined by Suket Tumeta, well-known author based between New York and Mumbai. I'm also joined by Minakshi Ganguly of Human Rights Watch. Thank you all very much for joining me tonight. Suket Tumeta, first, as a citizen listening to what Nitin Gokhale just outlined about what India's plans are, living through what's actually happening in the United States, how do you look at this whole trade-off between security concerns and the issue of a violation of an essential human right, privacy? Well, as an American citizen and as a person of Indian origin, mm -hmm. I am concerned on two fronts. As an American citizen, I am concerned that my government is monitoring my phone calls, monitoring my internet traffic. And as a person of Indian origin, I am concerned that the U.S. government uh, has mined 6.3 billion reports from India. Uh, President Obama uh, came um, on television and um, made clear that there were safeguards, legal safeguards against American citizens' mm -hmm. uh, data being mined. Uh, you need a warrant to get information from uh, the computer of an American citizen. No such safeguards exist for Indian citizens. If the American government wanted to snoop on Manmohan Singh's Gmail account, there is absolutely no legal sanction that would prevent it from doing so. So I'd be very concerned if I were an Indian, the American government can find out who you're emailing, who you're calling, uh, who your lovers are, how much you earn, what you think of your country, uh, what you think of your family. And this data that it is collecting in the cloud it's something that people all over the world voluntarily surrender to the internet, mm -hmm. to cloud computing, to, the, to Gmail accounts every time they go on Skype. And this data is being kept in perpetuity and the potential for misuse is enormous. Professor, uh, Professor Jervis, if you could come in on the debate there, because in fact, the debate has only grown over the last uh, 24 hours as it became clear that initial uh, revelations by the US government were actually factually wrong. Some of the worries being raised now, and we've seen a U.S. congressman come out and make that point, that they were not really kept in the loop. Uh, President Obama said that this is something which uh, uh, p there is some political consensus on. He's willing to debate it with any member of Congress. But it's clear that there were initial cover-ups by the government and increased worry over, over how the surveillance is actually cleared. Are these worries that you share, or do you agree with the view that this is essential to prevent uh, terrorist attacks? In fact, uh, uh, the one congressman has mentioned a 2009 potential New York subway attack, which he says was foiled because America had the surveillance. Well, at this point, unfortunately, it's very hard to tell the example that the congressman gave and that I think uh, DNI uh, Director Clapper gave doesn't make a lot of sense. What they've described does not require a lot of data mining, and it isn't clear really that the evidence came from the programs they're talking about. The essential problem is, yes, there are legitimate security concerns. I suspect these programs do yield valuable information, but they raise very troubling issues of privacy and civil liberties. But the irony is we as the citizens and even most members of Congress can't intelligently debate what's being done unless we're told more about mm -hmm. what is being done. And the administration, of course, says, well, we can't tell you because if we tell you, then the terrorists uh, will be able to hide the information. There's something to the administration's argument, but I think it is really exaggerated. My guess, and I admit I don't know many terrorists personally, but my guess is that any of them who are competent assume that their communications are being monitored as much as the U.S. can. Mm -hmm. And so I think it would be safe to reveal more about the kind of data we're gathering, not the, all the details, but the kind, so we can have an informed debate about the trade-off between security and privacy. And by the way, I agree with Mr. Medic that this is not only for American citizens, the uh, protections that they have, uh, of citizens of other countries don't. In fact, I want to bring in Minakshi Ganguly uh, specifically on that point, because uh, the whole kind of disregard, as it were, for the rest of the world in the U.S. defense and President Obama's defense, 
Do you think that's really frightening? Because also the point others are making is that other governments may well pick up from what the U.S. is actually doing. We've heard uh, Nitin Gokhale just outline what the Indian plans are for their cybersecurity network. And we hear the same assurances, but in practice it may be very, very different. Absolutely, Sonia. It is, abs it is uh, really, really crucial at this point of time, at a more practical level, to understand that technology offers much more experience, that the net is, can be cast really wide, and your privacy. But that said, the blightness, blightness with which the U.S. administration has suggested that it was perfectly comfortable for other people, surveying other people around the globe, is of deep concern. It, US, it undermines the US as a champion of internet freedom because it, what is the US suggesting? Oh, please be free on the internet because we can stack your data. It's, it is shocking all around. And, and most of all, it does send completely the out about uh, privacy and, 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 uh, and the freedom of expression.